Okey, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Hari ini today we'll be discussing the chapter 7. Uh, we, the chapter will be control lah. A part of planning, leading, organizing and the last one will be control. Okay. So, this is the chapter outline. Okay. So, we'll be discussing briefly on definition, the process, types of control. Okay. Uh, potential barriers and making controlling successful. Right. So, what is the definition of control and controlling? Okay lah, kita pergi cara biasanya ialah orang akan faham control ni kita mengawal, betul? Kita kawal you. Uh, so, kita jaga you. Uh, Kongkong you. Tapi adakah itu yang dimaksudkan sebenar-benarnya? So, control sebenarnya ialah making something happen the way it was planned to happen. So, I, kalau you tengok parents you control you macam tu sekali. Sebab dia nak benda tu jadi mengikut apa yang dia aturkan. And controlling is the process, kalau dalam konteks organisasi, is the process managers go through to control. According to Robert Moffler, dia kata, a systematic effort by the business management to compare performance to predetermined standards. Plans or objective to determine whether performance is in line with these standards and presumably to take any remedial action required to see that human and any and other corporate resources are being used in the most effective and efficient way possible and achieving corporate objective. Panjang definition dia, process control ini. So, kalau awak tengok dalam process control, your parents nak control you tu, mesti dia based on something. Mesti dia ada objective dia, bukan terus saja buat. So, in a way, you kena faham kenapa dia nak control. So, bila you kerja nanti pun, ataupun you tengah buat something pun, you tengah buat rutin you ni pun, you need to know you have to uh, look back on your objective. Okay, baru you perasan that, oh, actually, aku nak bangun awal pagi. Bila aku bangun awal pagi, aku kena tidur awal. Jadi, aku boleh bangun awal. Uh, so, you control that part. Okay, so the systematic process through which managers regulate organizational activities to make them consistent with the expectation established in plans and to help them achieve all predetermined standards of performance. Okay, ni clear kat sini eh. Maknanya apa yang kita nak jadi tu akan jadi dalam dalam planning kita. So, this also will help to establish the standard. And of course, develop mechanism for gathering performance information. Sebab kita dah tahu macam mana kita nak nilai ataupun nak capai performance kita. You dah tahu dah untuk bangun pagi tu you kena buat apa. You dah ada standard you. Okay, semenjak buat rutin tu aku rasa aku boleh tidur awal. Tapi aku yang malas rupanya. Something like that. Okay. Right. So, ini adalah proses control. So, bila nak control tu, set performance standard. So, maknanya daripada awal planning tu, you dah tengok. So, you need to measure actual performance. Nanti at the end of the day, nanti bila you dah habis rutin, you akan tengok. Sama ada you capai ke tidak. Ataupun you nak tengok rutin you seharian. Oh, hari ni itu yang remember tak saya suruh awak take. Okay. So, you need to measure the actual performance. And you compare the actual performance with the standards. Okay. With if no deviations or if deviations are acceptable acceptable maknanya tidak ada apa-apa maknanya you are actually on track in your planning so take no corrective action or provide positive reinforcement maknanya yes aku dah boleh bangun pagi 7 hari berturut-turut semenjak madam uh, Dr Tahira suruh buat rutin ni from bagilah reward kat diri sendiri okay so you need to repeat back the process sebab you nak jadikan rutin tu habit kan However, if deviations, maknanya sebab you tak boleh bangun pagi tu tidak boleh diterima. Okay, sebab you tertidur lah, terlupa lah, kan. So, bila jadi macam tu, it's not acceptable, you kena pergi balik, kena tengok corrective action. Apa sebenarnya silap kat situ? Okay, kena cari. So, ini tadi tu, setting standards for performance, the first one tu. Whenever possible, the standard should be set in manner to allow them to be compared with actual performance. In a way lah. Okay, kena faham juga. Bila kita buat orang kata standard ni, kena faham orang mampu untuk capai. 
Okay, macam you tengok permainan-permainan apa American uh, yang yang lawan-lawan tu. Kan? Right? So, kena kena terima lah bila diorang dah buat pertandingan game-game lasak tu maknanya ada orang boleh buat. Okay? So, saya harap uh, awak faham setakat itu kita akan Uh, pergi kepada number 2 measuring actual performance okay so an organization must decide what to measure okay when to measure how frequently to measure okay faham tak boleh tak terima okay tiga benda ni what to measure When to measure, how frequently to measure. Okay, so bila dah tahu apa yang nak dicapai, dengan macam mana awak nak capai dan kerap, kerap berapa kerap yang awak nak tengok. So dalam kes nak bangun pagi hari-hari kan. So what to measure, you boleh bangun pukul 6 pagi ke tidak. When, pagilah. Kan, so sebab tu you kena tick. Okay. Seterusnya ialah Comparing actual performance with standards. This step involves determining in actual performance. Okay. Compared to standard falls within acceptable limits. Okay. Number four. Responding to deviation. Okay. So comparing dah compare. So kalau deviation tadi yang saya sebut tu unacceptable, kena pergi tengok collective action. Kalau acceptable, maknanya tak perlu teruskan je rutin tu balik. Tak ada masalah pun. Okay. So, types of control and bila nak guna ni. Okay. So, control system dia ada satu ialah kalau ada input, kita akan ada preventive control. Kalau ada dari segi transformation process ni, dia ada concurrent control. Bila dah dapat output, dia akan jadi corrective control. Kita nak pastikan sebelum apa-apa jadi, dia akan fokus pada undesirable material, benda yang tak perlu untuk buat kerja tu. Financial, contohnya you tahu kalau you nak tidur awal tak boleh main game. Okay, material, financial or human resources that serve as inputs to, tra to the transformation process. Kalau concurrent pula, maknanya tengah-tengah screening control, focuses on the transformation process to ensure that it is, it is functioning properly. Okay, so maknanya you fikir pada tu. Selalu tak tengok bila katakanlah hadir awak ataupun sesiapa pun budak-budak. Bila kita tegur-tegur banyak kali. Jangan, jangan, jangan. Ha, bila dah jadi, dia nangis. Kan? Bila cakap tak dengar. So, maknanya kat situ proses kontrol tu ada sedikit loophole-nya. Okay? So, number three ialah feedback. Post action. Maknanya lepas kita kan selalu buat apa-apa post-mortem. Corrective control. Focuses on how discovering undesirable output and implementing corrective action. Number four is multiple focal points. Most organizations use several control systems focus on various phases of the transformation process. Lagi bagus. Okay. Sebab kita tak nak benda tu jadi dan menyusahkan kita. Jadi baik kita ada multiple focal points ataupun pelbagai types of control. Okay. So what kind of barriers will actually um, disturb ataupun uh, menyusahkan. Okay. Right? Pada proses control ni. So, ada ada beberapa. Okay, you tengok first ni long term versus short term production. So, burden to manager because they need to ensure that plan performance and actual performance are equivalent in the short term and long term production quotas. Yang saya suruh awak buat ni, rutin awak ni ialah dari segi short term saja. Saya tak suruh awak buat long term pun for the sake of you nak tengok sama ada you boleh plan atau tidak. Okay? So, employee frustrations and morale. Okay, bila terlampau sangat control. Tak payah berkata dalam konteks organisasi pun. Konteks rumah sendiri pun. Oi, banyak pula mulut mak kita nak membebel kat kita kan. Control sangat. Ha, saya ialah tu tak payah cakap orang lain. But again, um, kena tengok juga sama ada employees morale ni tends to be low and frustrated because they think that there is no freedom for them to do good job. Ha, tak mahu lah sampai macam ni. Okay, kita nak create suasana, control, tapi nak menggalakkan orang boleh buat kerja lebih lagi. Sebab dia pekerja kena faham, 
tujuan kena kontrol tu untuk apa? Supaya pekerja dalam landasan untuk mencapai produktiviti organisasi. Okay, number three, perspective of organization members. Although controls can be designed to focus on relatively narrow aspects of an organization, manager must remember that prospective Corrective action is not only relation to the specific activity being controlled but also relation to all other organization units. Bila benda jadi dan tak mengikut apa yang telah direncanakan, akan ada pihak yang jadi, orang kata kambing hitam untuk dipersalahkan ataupun memang dia bersalah. So, bila wujudnya cerita-cerita macam ni, you kena berhati-hati sebab Orang tak suka bila dituduh ni. Ha, sebab kita nak kontrol, nak pastikan ada outcome pada office, uh, uh, organisasi kan. Tapi organisasi nampak benda ni perlu di, 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 dibetulkan secepat mungkin. So, akan ada ahli-ahli organisasi yang tak suka dengan keadaan itu. Okay, number four, means versus ends. Okay, control activities are not the goal of the control process. They are merely the means to eliminating problems. Okay, kena faham. Control ni sebenarnya kita tak nak ada masalah. Okay, sebab itulah kita buat sekiranya masalah berlaku, kita kena fikir corrective actions to be, orang kata to be able to justify untuk organisation benefit sendiri. Bukannya suka-suka untuk kita sendiri. Okay, so number five will be filing of reports. Okay, employee may perceive that management is based on corrective action. Solely on department records with no regard for extenuating circumstances. And if this is the case, they may feel pressure to falsify record. Sebab nak kejar sangat, orang kata standard, uh, data pun kena palsukan sebab nak tunjuk baik sangat. Tak maulah sampai macam tu sekali kan. Kita nak kita kerja dalam keadaan if something happen, kita kena terima yang berlaku tu adalah atas sebab kita sendiri. Bukannya kita suka-suka. Okay, so what kind of criteria will be good enough for effective control? Satu ialah kena related dengan organizational strategy. Pergi balik rutin awak. Kena apa awak buat rutin awak? Okay, and you need to utilize all steps in the control process. So